Welcome to So Bliss. Today I'm going to show you how to make the breezy romper from Brindle and Twig. Here is one of the rompers that I have already made. I'm super happy with how it turned out. I think it's super cute and will look really good on my little boy. I haven't put the snaps on it. You put snaps right here and at the bottom. I'm a little indecisive about it, so maybe you guys can help me out on what color I should use or if I should just go with a silver or a white. Let me know in the comments down below. Now, to get started, you're gonna need to go get the pattern. And like I said before, it's from Brindle and Twig. They're a darling pattern company, and I just love all of their children's patterns. I'll put a link down below for this romper, the breezy romper, like I said, what I'm doing today, and a link to all their other patterns. You'll have to check them out because they're super cute. Now, the other supplies that you're going to need are first your fabric. And you're gonna need some stretchy knit fabric. And depending on what size you make, you're gonna need either half a yard or three fourths of a yard. So just look at the pattern and it will let you know which one you need. You're also going to need a small amount of fusible interfacing and I suggest a heavier weight so that it will hold up better with the snaps that we put in. Speaking of snaps, you're gonna need six snaps and they recommend size 14, which is a good size for baby clothing. Then you're going to need 3 8 inch wide elastic and then all your basic sewing supplies. So let's get started. Now the first thing that you're going to need to do is print out the pattern. And the one thing I like about Brindle and Twig patterns is that they're all PDF patterns so you can print them at home. And it's just quick and easy and whenever I want to sew something I can easily just print something off. I already have mine cut out. So first you're going to want to print out that pattern and put it together and then cut out your pieces. For this one that I'm sewing today I'm going to show you how to put in sleeves so I cut out some little sleeves. But if you don't want yours to have sleeves, it doesn't have to. The nice thing about this pattern is that it also comes with an armband pattern piece, so you don't have to do sleeves. So this one doesn't have sleeves, but the one I'm making and showing you guys will have sleeves. So I really like that option. Once I have those pattern pieces all cut out, now I'm going to get my interfacing and put it on my placket pieces. So this is the large placket piece with the larger interfacing piece. There's one, and then here's the other two that I had cut out. So I'm gonna take those and iron those on. Now I'm gonna iron it in about a quarter of an inch from my edges and they're gonna mirror each other. So this one is on the left side and this one is on the right side, coming down a quarter of an inch and in a quarter of an inch. So I'll iron those down. And then I'm gonna take my interfacing my smaller pieces and put it on the bottom of the front and back piece, the body piece. So again, I'm gonna come in about a quarter of an inch and iron that down. And I'll put this piece on the other one. After that interfacing is ironed on, we're then gonna take this snap placket guide, make sure it's this small one and not the big one that was for your fabric. So it does say you cut it from interfacing and you're using it as your guide. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna place it. I folded mine in half so that I can match that line up with this notch that was right here. Mine's kind of hanging on by a thread. So I did put a little notch right there so I can match that up. So I'm gonna match that up, but this is gonna come up a quarter of an inch. So I'll put it up just like this, making sure it stays right in the center and is a quarter inch above my fabric. And I'm going to pin the paper on. This is gonna help us as we sew around it to create that guide for our placket. So I'm just gonna place one over here just so it's nice and in place. And now I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch right along this guide. So just right on the edge of the paper, I'm gonna stitch that rectangle right here. And I'm gonna be using a long stitch, so I'm gonna be using the longest stitch on my sewing machine. Once you have sewn around the placket guide, here's what it's gonna look like. So you can see I did my really long stitches and just did that right along the edge of the paper. Next, I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut a line from the very middle at the top down, but I'm gonna to leave about an inch 
and then I'll cut from that point down to the corner and from that point down to this corner. So for both corners, I'll cut to each making a triangle. Let me show you how that's gonna be done. So I'm starting at the top in the middle and cutting down. I'll leave about an inch there. Maybe cut a little bit down. There we go. And then I'm going to angle it to that point and cut right to it. But I'm not cutting through my stitches. So I'm just making sure to cut to it, not through it. And then I'll come back up here and cut again, to, but to this corner. And again, cutting to it, not through the stitches. So there we have the line cut and then we'll have this triangle. So once that's cut, then I'm gonna take my back piece and I'm gonna lay it on top of my front piece with the shoulder seams matching up. And I'm gonna take that over to my serger and serge the shoulder seams down. So this point right here and this point right here, I'm gonna serge down. And make sure your pieces are right sides together. Once you have those shoulder seams sewn together, then we're gonna take our neck band. And here I have mine and I've just folded it in half with the wrong sides together. And if you want to, you could also iron that. Sometimes it helps keep it um, nicely folded. So I'm gonna take mine and I'm gonna fold it in half again. And I'm gonna find that center point. So matching the raw edges up at the end. And I'll just find that that's the center of my neck band. And I'm gonna put a pin right there and then I can open back up. And that pin, I'm gonna take and match up with the notch in the back of the romper. And I'm gonna match up the raw edges. So right along here, so I can take that, match it up, and I'll take my pin and pin through that. Then I can go around, and if you want to, you can pin it, and if not, you can just leave it. Because next we're going to go over to our serger and serge this down. And I'm going to stitch from this point around to this point and then back from this point around to this point. And that way I can get an even stitch all the way around. And I probably will stretch it a little bit because it needs to fit that space. So once you have that one pinned, you can look at this and see that it needs to stretch a little bit to actually fit. So I'll take this end, making sure all my raw edges match up. So I'll take it and line it up, making sure it lines up with this corner and I can pin that down. And then when I go over to my serger, I'll just stretch this. And one thing I forgot to mention is if you don't have a serger, you can use a sewing machine. You just need to use your stretch stitch. You can look in your user manual to find out if your machine has one. Or you can use a zigzag stitch. So whatever machine you have, you're going to go over to it and you're just going to stretch that as you sew so that it fits all along there. After sewing that neck band on, I like to go along and just press it with my fingers so that the serge part is rolling down and later we're going to top stitch that down so if you want to you can iron it but sometimes it's nicer just to do it with your fingers making sure it's laying really nicely so now i have that i'm going to set that off to the side for a second and then i'm going to get my placket pieces and turn them to the wrong sides here i have them mirroring each other. So I'm going to take my plackets and turn them so that the right sides are facing each other and just folding it in half and you can pin it if you want. You don't have to and I'm just going to go and stitch right along here with my serger. And I'm going to do that to both pieces. So I'm going to make sure it's at the end See how I have like half an inch here and a quarter inch here? I'm gonna be doing it at the quarter inch end. 
Now I can take those placket pieces and I'm gonna turn them right sides out. And just make sure that you get those corners nice and out. If you need to, use a point turner. This one I have on the end of my seam gauge. And just make sure that corner comes out nicely. And I'll probably press these as well, just so they lay really nice. And it just makes the placket look a lot nicer in the end if you're pressing as you go. Now once I have those plackets all ready, I'm going to pin them on to the front that we cut out. So I'm gonna take my one placket, and here I have my raw edges on the side. Here I have that serged edge right there. So I'm gonna take it and the top part is gonna line up with the neckband. So I wanna make sure that lines up really nicely. And then the raw edge is going to match up with this raw edge that we cut. So I'm gonna match that up and make sure you pin this really good. And then I'll get my other placket piece. And again, making sure the raw edges are gonna match up and the top folded part will match up nicely with the neck band. And pin that in place. Now, when I take this over to my sewing machine, I'm gonna flip it to the wrong side. And here you can see my pins. Make sure that lays flat. And I'm gonna be stitching down, but I'm just gonna be following that straight stitch we have already done. With those large stitches, I'm just gonna follow that all the way down to the bottom, right to that point where the triangle meets right there. And I'll stop right there. After you've sewn those plackets down, here's what it looks like from the front side. So I just stitched down to that point. Now I'm going to take the plackets and put them inside. So see how I just tuck that down in there? There's one. I can just press that with my fingers so it lays nicely. See, you want it to match up right along here so that it just lays and creates that continuous neck band. And then I'll turn this one and tuck that inside. And you can do whichever one on the top that you want. So for me, it's gonna be more whatever the fabric looks better is what I like to see whatever preference you have, you can do. To finish off the placket, we're gonna take this front top piece and I'm just gonna fold it up until I see the triangle down here. And if yours isn't laying flat like this, just make sure you pull it out and it lays flat. And I'm gonna come along here and just do a straight stitch right along here. Here's what it looks like on the inside of my placket. So now I'm just gonna go over to my serger and I'm gonna serge these edges. So that's gonna give that a really nice clean finish. It's gonna look really professional. Now to finish off this placket in the neck band area, I'm going to top stitch all the way around it. So I'll probably start at a shoulder seam and I'm gonna stitch down and I'm just gonna be right next to this seam that the neck band created and then the placket created. And Hopefully I will stitch down that surged edge. So that'll lay really nicely. Now, like I said before, this pattern has two options. You can either do a sleeve or an armband, and I'm gonna be doing the sleeve option. There's a little bit of difference in the pattern, so just make sure you're following along. But to do the armband, next you're gonna be doing the side seams. So you'll serge those together. But if you're doing the sleeve, we're gonna set that off to the side and I'm gonna take my sleeves and I'm gonna go along right here and I'm gonna serge that on both pieces and then I'm gonna fold it under about 3 eighths of an inch and I'm gonna top stitch that down. So once it's serged, I'll top stitch it down. I'm probably gonna do just a single straight stitch to match the other top stitching that I did but you can also do a zigzag stitch or a double needle stitch. Now, once the sleeves are all hemmed, we're gonna put them on to the romper. So here I have mine already pinned on and I'm doing right sides together. I found that notch that's in the sleeve, it's the center point, and I matched it up with the shoulder seam. So right along here. Then I took the end of the sleeve and matched it up with the notch in the front or the back piece of the romper. 
So there's the notch. So there's still a little bit left, but that is not gonna have the sleeve sewn into it. So I just matched the end of the sleeve up with the notches, and then I'll go sew that down. And I'm gonna do that to both pieces. Now when I sew it down, I'm gonna start at this edge over here, and I'm gonna surge along here, and then catch the sleeve, and surge up and around and down this edge to the end. Now once you have sewn your sleeves in, you're then gonna top stitch just like we did on the neckband and the placket. So I did that on this side and on the other side. Then we're gonna take the piece and fold it right sides together and line up our side seams. With those lined up, we're then gonna go over to the serger and serge right along the edge on both sides. Now to finish off the sleeves, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to do a lock stitch um, just outside the seam on either side. You can barely see mine because they're white stitching on white. Um, so just go back and forth a few times right there and that'll just make sure your arm hole doesn't separate. So make sure to do that on both sides. Next, we're ready to do the bottom part where the snaps will go. So we're gonna take these two edges right along here and we're just gonna serge the edges. We're not gonna serge them together or anything, just serge right across here. And then we'll take that and fold it over three fourths of an inch. So I'm gonna take my seam gauge and measure that and make sure it lines up correctly. Once you get it measured and lined up correctly, then we're gonna take our elastic and just tuck it right in there and we'll pin that in place. So I haven't measured mine yet, but just to give you a rough idea, you'll tuck it in and it'll go right along the edge just like that. So make sure it'll line up nicely and I'm going to tuck it into that edge and sew it down straight across here. I'm just going to be sewing that straight down and I'm going to do that on either side. So I'll take this piece on this side and then I'll get my other piece and put it over here measure that and make sure it's at three-fourths and put that in place as well so when I sew this down when I straight stitch right along here I'll be sewing that elastic in place as well and I'll do that on this side and then once that's sewn down I can take the end and make sure it's not twisted and make sure that it'll just lay nicely nice and flat and I'll bring it over here and I'll do the exact same thing. So this edge will be tucked in there and this edge will come over here and I'll stitch that down again, making sure both pieces are tucked in and stitched. So here's what it should look like before you sew it down. I have the elastic attached right here in the corner on both sides and then brought it across to the other side and attached it in that corner and in that corner. So now I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and just do a straight stitch right along here, making sure to catch the elastic on either side. Now with the elastic in place, I'm going to find the center of it. So just fold it in half and put a pin on that folded edge. And then I'm gonna match that pin up with the side seam of the romper and that way when I'm stretching the elastic, it will be evenly distributed through the leg hole. So now I'm gonna take it over to my serger and as I'm serging along the edge, I'm gonna stretch this elastic to fit. And I'll do that to that pin right there and then I'll do the same thing over here. And I'm gonna do this to both sides. Here's what it will look like once you have serged that elastic in. So next I'm just gonna fold it over one time and I'm stretching it while I do this. And I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and just top stitch that down. And I'm gonna stitch just like I did on the serger, but on the top side, I'm gonna hold it and stretch it as I sew and just do a straight stitch right along here. Now to finish off the romper, we're gonna put our snaps in place. So here I started on the bottom and I'm doing the front of the romper right here. And then this back part will come up and over just like this. So here I have the snaps in place and this is the female part of the snap. So I just place these two side ones and then I'm gonna take my tool and I poked a hole right here to put my next one in. And I just kind of eyeballed this one. 
So here I have that front part of it and I just poke it through right there. And then I get a female piece and set it on top. Make sure I like the setup of that. And then I use this tool and put it top and once I have it in place then I can scrunch it together and there I have those pieces in place then I can go over to this side and I'll put this on top and line that up and then take this tool and poke the holes then I can do the other set of snaps. So for this side, I poked the hole right there. Then I'll put this part on top this time. So that's what you'll be seeing when it's all closed. And then I'll put the male part on top and take my tool and get that situated in there and press it together and there we go and then those should snap together now I can set the other two and do the ones on my placket as well once you have finished putting your snaps in you are all done with your breezy romper thanks for watching this video guys I hope you enjoyed it if you haven't already make sure to check out brindle and twig patterns I'll put a link in the description down below and make sure to subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye.